Hello, I'm Lord Jimsicle. With me is Chris Maddock of Earth and Ant Grant Gordon. And you're watching You Have Progs, a Halloween special all about the galaxy's greatest comic, 2000 AD. We're here at the Spaniards Inn pub in Hampstead, London. This place was built in 1585 and is a very historical pub with lots of historical value. It's also the most haunted pub in London. Well, Charles Dickens used to write in the garden, Dick Turpin, the famous highwayman, was born here, and this place even gets a mention in Bram Stoker's Dracula. Drink! So we decided to dust off the old box of scripts and comics and what have you that we had lying around during our break, and then I thought of something. Why don't we bring back You Have Progs? That was very well received. So we did. So, it's 1926, and the Ghostbusters haven't been invented yet. So who indeed do you call? I'll tell you who. A bunch of influential real-life figures who can kick ass and blitz your dissertation. I present to you... Necronauts. Written by Gordon Rennie and art by Fraser Irving. Necronauts is a story that ran in December 2000 till February 2001 that depicts important historical and entertaining figures from the late 19th century teaming up. More specifically, it's a story set in 1926 about famous escapologist and magician Harry Houdini inadvertently discovering the existence of the spectral realm while testing a trick involving a near-death experience and then enlisting the help of Sherlock Holmes creator and physician Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, kooky supernatural writer H.P. Lovecraft and paranormal investigator Charles Fort, who all team up to fight the underworld and prevent it from surfacing to our realm and destroy. Now if the description alone didn't make you want to buy it and read it straight away, here's why it's good. It's a great experience having these real life figures teaming up in such an oddball setting and premise that is unique to comics. It's like the thinking man's expendables. Speaking of, this series has plenty of action ranging from Houdini kicking ass in the spectral realm, HP Lovecraft being weird and a bit of a dick, as well as Conan Doyle and Charles Fort fighting monsters and demons in the real world with revolvers and a cricket bat. Because there is nothing more English than a bloody cricket bat. The art is utterly astounding. Finely detailed black and white as well as maintaining a non-realistic style which in my opinion is a plus. Great care was taken to portray each character's likeness as closely as possible as well as retaining a comic book style to it which is happening less and less in comics these days. I would have preferred to see some creatures from the Cthulhu mythos but it makes more sense not to include them as it would just raise more questions. In summary, I would recommend this book highly if you're into horror, specifically supernatural horror. It has dry humour, frightening scenes, and a few easter eggs for those who are well versed with these people. Unfortunately, this was only a one-off story, but it's still worth a read. You can get it in a trade paperback. What the hell are you doing sitting there listening to me talk? Go out to your comic shop! Never changes. It's horrendous, horrible, and horrifying. But there is something more horrendous, horrifying, and more. And that is when vampires are involved. So, my thrill power seeking friends, allow me to introduce themes of the Eastern Front. This first appeared way back in Prog 152. 1980, and is a classic tale of horror and suspense, told in the unforgettable style of 2000 AD's early years. Created by 2000 AD regulars, writer Jerry Finley Day and artist Carlos Escarra. This chilling yarn opens in modern day Berlin, well, 1980 West Berlin to be exact, where workmen excavating an old building make a chilling discovery. They enter the room to find a lone long dead Nazi soldier sitting upright in a chair, dressed in full uniform. The only other contents are a diary by a one Hans Schmidt and drawings covering the walls. Once the authorities are called in, they start reading the diary to try to piece together what took place in there. The diary chronicles Nazi soldier Hans Schmidt's experiences during the Second World War and his days on the Eastern Front. 
His platoon teams up with another platoon from allied Romania. He finds them to be an odd bunch, led by a somewhat fiendish looking Captain Constanta. As the days go by, he becomes suspicious of them as he finds that things just don't add up. They are never seen during the day and only turn up for battle at night. Furthermore, he sees the only Romanian soldier who appears during the day unloading their supplies which he is seen to always transport about. But why are their supplies being kept in coffins? As the story progresses, he becomes convinced that they are in fact vampires. Witnessing their supernatural transformations into mist, bats and wolves in order to massacre the Russians, he becomes relieved they are on his side. But then all hell breaks loose for Hans and his platoon once they discover that the Romanians have in fact switched sides. Captain Constanza returned after 16 years in 2006, appearing in a magazine in a story entitled Stalingrad, with this time David Bishop and Colin McNeil taking up creative duties. This is another tale set during World War II, with a similar framing device in a flashback story. This time, a blinded Nazi soldier, who has been captured and imprisoned, tells of Constanza and his fiendish minions' attack against the Russians. He does this to put a stop to the supposed supernatural secret weapon the Russians are preparing, to put a stop to the vampire once and for all. Vampires and Nazis. What will they think of next? Well, funny enough, what I'm delving into is a somewhat similar odd combination. Just picture your typical Guy Ritchie gangster movie and add in a huge dose of demon possession and gruesome hellspawn. So, without further ado, let me introduce you to the seedy and twisted world of Carver Hell. The story is entitled Twisting the Knife, first appearing in Prog 1256 during 2001 and written by Mike Carey and drawn by Mike Perkins. The story is that of two rival London crime bosses that turn out to be in fact demons in human form who have been thrown out of hell due to some kind of civil war. Allegiances are formed in the crime community as the two demons go head to head for control and a bloodbath ensues. Carver Hale, a loyal mobster with a fondness for facial tattoos is caught in the middle of this and killed along with his boss. Being a supernatural fright fest, this is far from over as his boss's evil spirit enters Carver's body, bringing him back from the brink of death and sustaining him in order to do his bidding in the oncoming struggle for power. Carver then spends most of the story travelling round East London at the behest of this demon that now shares his body with him, using his knowledge and power in order to take vengeance on the demon that tried to put an end to them, armed with a double-barreled shotgun. He does this along with the help of fellow associate and full-time Wally, Eddie, and a young scantily clad witch by the name of the Lady of Fawns, who acquired her powers via an internet download. Will Carver be the good soldier he always is, following orders blindly? Or will he make a stand against evil, banishing it forever, in order to shape his own destiny? A great thing about this story is the constant cockney dialogue throughout. It's the genuine article, and makes for some humorous moments. Blimey, he wasn't so hard, was he? You sort of think it should take more effort, like killing a demon. Now you go put that wrapper in the bin, huh? Have a bit of respect for your environment. Oh, come off it. I may have topped a few blokes in my time, but I never dropped no litter. Stone the crows, frogman. How many times do we have to go over this? Erdacore ate Billy, then wore his skin, so we'd all think Billy was running the rackets. The ending seems to set up for more episodes of ghoulish terror. But these never happened. This is most likely due to writer Mike Carey moving to DC Comics in the US, leaving Carver Hale in limbo. As good as Carver would have been as a 2000 AD regular, this is still a great one-off story, oozing with thrill power. Thank you very much for watching our Halloween special of You Have Prompt. I'm Lord Jimsical. And I'm Prismatic Verse. And Grant Gordon. I wish you a very happy Halloween. You drunk head. <laughs> <laughs>